Well, welcome to uh, our YouTube channel, where hopefully we're going to have guides, chat about things in our skies, space stuff, and uh, help uh, all the members of UK Astronomy and anyone else out there. So, to start it all off, here's just a little introduction to what UK Astronomy is and how it started. Uh, my name's Ross, I'm the accidental founder of UK Astronomy, and it was done by accident, as you'll see. So, how it all started was my wife bought me a £50 tabletop Dobsonian. It was a Heritage 76 Mini, only a tiny little scope. It was for my birthday in September, but I didn't really use it until probably about October or November. It just sat on the shelf like many others do. I did pop out once or twice to Campbell Park and looked at the full moon. It was still quite small for the telescope. I peeked at a few stars as well, but overall it didn't really overexcite me. That was until I bought an astronomy magazine and saw that Jupiter was up. I expected not to see much, as previous views didn't really show any promise. I ventured out into my light polluted garden in Milton Keynes, looked up and saw a white blob in the sky, thinking to myself, no way, that's a planet. I popped some scope on my garden bench, looked through it, and wow, I could see, although still small, a planet. I could just make out its gas lines. I then noticed it had four white dots in a diagonal line. A quick Stellarium later, which is a sky guide app that you can get on your phone, it's pretty good, I realised I was actually seeing its four main moons. I rushed inside to the wife who was sat reading on the sofa and apparently shouted, oh my god, I can see a planet, it has moons and everything, and then rushed back outside, not to be seen for at least a couple of hours. And thus started a passion inside me that just grew and grew, can't really explain it. So what's the next step? Well, I wanted to see more. So we took the scope to a local darker sky area just down the road in a little village called Emberton where we found a playing field surrounded by low trees, perfect for astronomy because the trees tend to filter out a lot of the light but it was nice and clear above us which is the best place to look. Uh, I had a peek around the skies with my little telescope spying what I thought was the Andromeda galaxy, can't confirm it but I think it was. It was like a small white smudge. I saw the Orion Nebula which is a little bit more of a detailed smudge, you can actually see a bit of detail that curls around like claws. I saw some cool star clusters and I thought yeah this is this is actually quite awesome. I'm really enjoying this. So one day on my way home riding my bike up the M1 in the dark after a day shift as a London firefighter I pondered what would I regret if I got knocked off and died right there. A happy thought. So what was it? Saving lives, world peace, running a marathon? No. It turned out it was not seeing a galaxy with my own eyes in the sky. So when I got home, I walked in the door and asked my wife-to-be if we could have a talk. She actually thought we were breaking up. I sat her down and said that I had been pondering life and had come to the conclusion that I wanted to put some money into buying a bigger scope. She was relieved and said, of course, an answer that she would later probably regret. So I researched and decided I wanted a 10 inch Dobsonian to manually hunt and find all the sites I could in our skies. When it arrived, I sent a pic to her once it was built. She had to build the base, it's a bit like Ikea, but it's quite easy to build. She thought it was sat on our coffee table. It wasn't. It was actually on the floor and it actually came up to my shoulder. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. I was so excited. So I dragged it down to Emberton's field the tube just fit across my back seat and the base could go in the boot just about. I set it up and mental. I saw everything from planets to nebula to galaxies, but I was alone in the field at 2 a.m. I had no friends or anyone else that I could share my excitement with. So after this, we searched around for people to just go out stargazing with so I could learn as I wouldn't even say that I was an astronomer to anyone then due to knowing nothing about the sky or anything really. But there wasn't really much around. So my wife suggested I start a Facebook group myself. So I thought, hmm, okay, what to call it? Uh, right, so we're in the UK and it's astronomy. About UK astronomy, Googled it, Facebooked it. No one had the name. So I thought, right, let's go for it then. So I started a group with just 30 of my unlucky friends. The logo was Mars but actually looked a bit more like a potato, apparently, as I was later told by a friend. Back in 2015, I was sat out with my Dobby 
That's what you call a dub sign, it's the dobby. In Emberton's field again, we have a homemade cardboard solar filter, which is a filter that you can look at the sun with safely. But don't worry, it did actually have a certified film in it. I just made the actual bit that attaches to the scope out of cardboard. Got professional ones now. I was watching the moon move across the sun in a sort of partial eclipse, which I'd never seen before. As I was sat there, a lady came over with a cup of uh, coffee and a bit of cake from the local pavilion. And they were both for me. So she started chatting to me and she said, what are you doing? So I said, I'm just having a look at the sun. I'm actually seeing the moon move across it. She said, like, oh, wow, that's really inspiring. She had a look herself, had a little chat. And she said that I should do a talk here at the pavilion for people that they knew. I laughed and I actually said, I don't actually really know anything. But after a little while, I thought, you know what? I could actually probably just do some stargazing nights to see if I could meet fellow stargazers to learn from, hopefully. So I learned that Friday nights the pavilion was open to the public. And the lady said that I could use the field anytime I liked. I went home and created a poster. I walked the streets of Emberton and Olney, asking local shops if I could put it up in the windows. And my first ever event, no one turned up. My second event, again, no one. So the wife was away for a weekend. I decided, let's go for a double bubble. We'll do a Friday and a Saturday night. Again, I pounded the pavement, putting up posters, torrential rain and thunderstorms both nights. No one again. But I didn't give up. There was something inside me that just kept saying, keep going, Ross, keep going. It was that passion, kind of what it was. So more posters, but this time, I said that I would actually do a talk. That way, if it was rubbish weather, someone might still come and just listen to me chatting away. Uh, I wrote a sort of humorous talk about the journey of what I'd seen and learned so far in astronomy, which involved three encounters with the police, a fox and two men carrying guns, as well as obviously seeing stars and stuff. 12 people turned up. I was absolutely terrified. I was shaking. I stood up in front of them and told my story reading from pieces of paper with my wife clicking the mouse to move the slides on. Not very professional at all, but they loved it. I think because I was open and honest and said, I'm just here, I'm Ross, I don't really know anything, but here's what I do know and what I've learned. So we did more and uh, UK Astronomy was pretty much born. The Facebook group grew. I was asked to do Cubs and Scout talks where I actually ended up taking my own TV in the car because I had no projector. The wife wasn't really happy about that when I'm carrying like a 40 inch telly and strapping it to the back seat. Uh, eventually we were asked to buy people if they could donate to help us because we, at that point we paid for everything ourselves. We paid for all the posters, we did all the work ourselves, all the petrol, everything. So we then decided, okay, well this seems to be going somewhere. So slowly over time, what was just one man in a field turned into a registered charity with thousands of friendly people in the Facebook group, helping others just like me. So we're now a husband and wife team that travel around in our mobile observatory, a VW Crafter van, which is dubbed the Space Crafter. It's actually got the design that I started with, UK Astronomy, with Mars all over it. A nicer picture of Mars now, though, not a potato. And yeah, we, we go around the UK teaching schools, doing over 40 events a year at various venues all around our day jobs still. And it's all thanks to the support of friends, family, community groups, and our sponsors. But most of all, what I'm proud of is that we ended up turning my greatest fear, which was talking in front of people and standing up into one of my greatest achievements to actually inspire thousands of people to go out and look up in the sky and wonder. So if I can do it, so can you guys. So that's the story of UK Astronomy and I hope it gives you a little insight of just what we are and who we are and hopefully we'll have lots more guides and educational stuff on here for you soon because there are a billion worlds in your back garden.